That's the day I couldn't get any more random and show my limit. It's a little bit windy. Get dizzy over here, proper dizzy. Whoa. Take him back on the fairground. Whoa. 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 Get dizzy here. Oh. <laughs> Where's this worm at? Okay, Pensure Monument. Um, I've had that picture for since my granddad passed now um, for a while. And um, this was drew, drew by my uncle Peter, um, bottom of the hill there. When I was a kid, you could see Pensure Monument from my grandparents' house uh, way down on the far. So to have that, and this was on the wall. Um, you know, it was an amazing drawing by Peter. Um, and the story of the land from worm is the fact that this massive worm used to terrorise the towns, and this was built for it to circle around. And, um, you know, that's what happens. It's a local myth. It's like the Loch Ness Monster in the North East. It's massive, it, you know, I mean, the Angel North's one thing. If you went down the Air One, you just need to veer off after the Angel North if you're heading towards Sunland. It's a monument that, I mean, it's unbelievable. The hill, the size, everything like that. And while I was at Beamish, I seen this. This is a folk tale. It's a song, so I'm not going to read it out. I'm just going to go through a brief bit of history, but it's about um, a man called Lantham. Um, who basically goes on this monk walk there, he's going fishing, he fishes a worm out of it um, and it's a bit weird so he puts it down the well. Um, he becomes a knight later on in his life where he's horsey <laughs> and uh, yeah, shows him going in a battle and stuff like that along with his dog. They're fighting people on camels and stuff like that and years later the lantern worm has become a massive creature terrorizing and everything, attacking dogs and cats and on the roam attacking sheep, so like my friend Ned does. And basically, there we go, there's a massive hill what I've just been talking about, so essentially that's the hill on the myth that, that was built on there as well. Um, and all the locals are fighting there, there we go. It's like, a, it's totally like Monty Python's this at all as well, because there we go tonight there and he's fighting around the rock and he basically chops his head off poor worm there and then it's got the song at the back the illustrations and he rides off on his horsey at the end of it um, it's published in Newcastle upon Tyne as well so it is a folklore um, second edition of that um, yeah so that's been around for a long time if you're ever in the north of England I highly recommend you go up there do not spin around like I did and get dizzy and it's the next day since that and then this video, I took my arm tattoo and I've just been lying on it. So yeah, check out my uh, new shining tattoo in another video that I'm going to try and film sometime. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, share, goodbye. Okay, I was just about to finish my uh, Pensure Monument Land from Worm video. Then I remembered, maybe it's in my folklore book which popped up in a lot of videos in the past. And it is, so I'm going to read out the actual folklore from this book about the Lanthorn Worm. Okay, so I'm going to quickly read this out for you. The Lanthorn Worm. In the Middle Ages, there was once a young or wild young who was heir to the Lanthorn Castle, which is near the village of Penshaw in County Durham. He went fishing in the River Weir one Sunday and caught a strange looking worm. On his way home, he threw it into a well by the castle and forgot about it. As he grew up, he changed his wild ways and eventually joined the crusade to the Holy Land. During his absence, the worm grew to an extraordinary size and wiggled out of the worm. <laughs> wiggled out the worm. Wiggled out of the well. It soon began to ravage the district, killing man and beast. And each night it slept, killed three times around Lambton Hill, which is now called Worm Hill. Attempts were made to slay the monster but whenever it was cut in two the halves merely joined up again so basically he chopped it up and it rejoined together okay seven years later the lord of lambton's son returned he was sickened with remorse at the result of his youthful folly 
So he was asked a witch that he could be best way of tackling the monster. She told him to cover his armour with razors, then fight the worm in the middle of the river. The, the price of her counsel that he should be killed the first creature and greet him after his victory. The plan was successful for when the worm wrapped itself around the knight, the razors cut it into pieces which were swept away in the river before they could join together. But the, but when he signified the signal to his father on the bulge, the old man forgot to release a greyhound as, <laughs> as arranged and ran to the river itself. The son refused to kill his father, so the witch put a curse on the family. In fact, from that day on, many lambdoms died violently with some tragic accidents and other in battle. So yeah, apart from me butchering the folklore of the lambton worm, that's what it is. So unlike the book where he chopped his head off, he actually had razors. So yeah, that is the folklore of the lambton worm. So my uncle who drew the picture must have been about maybe he's here when he sat and drew the picture years ago. But yeah, it's amazing, amazing, amazing North East. It's better than the North by far.